We are here with Luna Community College Interim President Ricky Chernoff, who will talk about our Higher Learning Commission accreditation. In November of 2017, Luna was placed on a show cause order by the Higher Learning Commission. Over the course of the last few months, Luna has done quite a lot to address Higher Learning Commission concerns. Thank you for being with us today. My pleasure, Jesse. On Wednesday, January 31st, Luna submitted a 126 page show cause report to the Higher Learning Commission. That's correct. How did you feel about the report? I felt very good about the report, mostly because the report is inclusive of all that we're doing now as an institution. It doesn't focus on where we uh, expect to be, where we hope to be, where we want to be. It's actually an evidence-based report uh, that summarizes all that we're currently doing, all that's in place now to show that we meet the criterion for accreditation. Did you feel that the college came together uh, during the, the time that the report was being written and just overall over the last couple of months? Oh, absolutely. I, I think that the introductory letter to the show cause report summarizes how under these kinds of circumstances, you know, uh, groups, whether they completely agree with each other or not, find common ground that binds them to work towards a common mission and goal. And at this point, you know, seeing the institution at risk for not being able to function in the long term really put people on the same sheet of music to get the report done in a real organized way. And although we had a, a pretty strategic approach to the plan, it really hindered on the ability of Criterion team leaders and staff, students, and community members to come together to identify evidence, draft narrative, and, and pull the report all together. Luna Community College um, is seeking comments on accreditation by stakeholders about the college as it prepares for the Higher Learning Commission visit. Right. The last day to submit the comments is today, Monday, February 19th. Okay. How do you think that went? Well, I, I think the campaign uh, that we launched to solicit the comments and feedback from a broad group of stakeholders was really uh, successful, and that included uh, you know, running articles in regional newspapers, the work that we did at Las Vegas night at the legislature, uh, and uh, distributing the, you know, the, the one pager that allowed for our staff and faculty to connect with uh, their network outside of here soliciting comments and feedback was a really smart approach. It was grassroots and, and what it also does is it promotes the college's commitment to transparency and that we want that feedback to go directly from those individuals to the Higher Learning Commission, good, bad, or indifferent. I think that more important than, you know, um, all of those comments being positive is that the community is aware of what's going on, that they're vested, and whether they're happy or not, and their feedback for how we can better serve the community is really what's most important. So I'm hopeful that um, those who uh, we made contact with or that were contacted ultimately took the time to send a comment to talk about either how we can grow, how we can better serve them, or how the institution has really helped them in their uh, you know, quest for a higher education degree. You began a Northern New Mexico tour to conduct public forums last week. The first one was held on Thursday, February 15th in Mora. Next will be Tuesday, January 20, excuse me, February 20th in Santa Rosa, followed by one on Tuesday, February 27th in Las Vegas with another one on Thursday, March 1st in Springer. Right. What, what is your goal with these forums? Well, uh, although over the last several months we've done a lot to communicate with uh, the, the region that we serve um, about everything that's been going on, telling the stories that uh, promote how well our students are doing and talking about how our staff and faculty are fulfilling you know, the mission of the institution, it's important for us to create uh, a form of communication that allows for people to communicate back with us. And even though there are some things in place now like feedback loops and certainly anybody can solicit our attention through emails and, and, and calling us, we need to create opportunities that don't only allow for us to speak to our stakeholders but allow for them to speak directly to us about how we can better serve their communities. So. Uh, there's a couple of ways that we do that. Clearly, our board of trustees represent the service region, and they're the connection between you know the community members and the institution. But this is another way for us to go directly to the communities and ask questions about 
um, how we can better serve their needs, ask questions that help us understand what the workforce needs are, what economic development should look like, and what our role in that should be. So uh, the forums are instrumental in providing updates to the general community, but also allowing for them to ask questions and, and get the answers that they need and, and contribute to what we do there in those uh, communities. On Thursday, March 1st, uh, it's obvious that you're, gonna, you're, you're a busy person. Uh, Luna will host a student forum at the coffee shop mm -hmm. in conjunction with Campus Life and the Communications Committee. Keep in mind that this is just one of several forums that you've uh, held with students. Right. Um, what, what uh, again, uh, what is your goal on this particular forum? Well, a couple of things, really. The first is really updating the students on the progress we're making toward the the June deadline, um, the time by which the Higher Learning Commission Board will make a decision about our accreditation. So we need to share with them um, what we've done, not only what the report contains, but what's happening next, the preparation for the visit, etc. So updates is important. The second uh, purpose of the forum is really to prepare students for the visit, uh, help them understand based on our understanding what they might expect, uh, promote their willingness to um, speak with the visiting team, help them be clear about the things that we've put in place, the changes that we've made to policies and procedures that impact them so that they too are on the same page with us about um, what's happening at the institution. So really promoting what we're doing, how close we're getting to that visit and how we're preparing for it is important, but also uh, preparing them for the visit and helping them understand that the role they play in this entire process is really instrumental. Also planned are visits to area high schools to talk to juniors and seniors and school officials. What do you want to get across during these visits? Sure. Well, we know that in the fall there were a lot of questions from students about the uh, certainty of their future here with the institution for this semester, the spring 2018. And at that time we were able to provide them with a certain degree of assurance that the spring semester would uh, continue to allow them uh, to take classes under an accredited institution, there'll be a lot more uncertainty in uh, this semester about the fall 2018. So what we need to do is, uh, is be proactive in reaching out to uh, our feeder high schools to talk to them about the conditions of show cause, let them know that the timeline for hearing back from the High Learning Commission is June, and until then, what we can do is assure them that we're doing our absolute best to address the concerns and um, encourage them to continue to trust in the institution, um, again, with that great big question mark in the background. So we want to go uh, to the high schools throughout northeastern New Mexico, work through the superintendents to, uh, to find some time with the juniors and seniors and really uh, be proactive about the messaging, the assurances, the lack thereof, and, and really help them understand uh, what LUNA offers to them by way of affordability, um, the education that we provide, the, you know, the classroom size, the student to teacher ratio, you know, uh, the transferability of our programs and our credits in a way that helps them you know, take a leap of faith that comes June, this institution is going to remain accredited. What can you tell us about the Higher Learning Commission visit that's scheduled between March 19th through March 21st? Um, right now we can tell you that a team of five that have been assigned to the visit will be here on the 18th and they'll start uh, a three-day visit on the uh, morning of the 19th. We expect that they'll want to meet with several subgroups of the, uh, the campus community from students, staff, faculty, and uh, we anticipate that they'll also want to communicate with various stakeholders throughout the community, meaning that there'll be a list of people from throughout northeastern New Mexico that they would love an opportunity to, to interact with. We also understand that during the three-day visit, we'll likely call a, a special meeting uh, so the board can interact with them in public session as well. Uh, right now, that's what we understand. What we're preparing for ultimately is that this team will be, um, will adamantly be looking for compliance. Uh, and, and the difference between that and all other visits that we might have with the Higher Learning Commission is that they're aware of the problems that we face as an institution and they'll be looking closely to see if we're in a position to overcome them as opposed to um, a visiting team coming to make sure that we're on the right path for sustaining compliance. Um, so 
uh, we're going to do everything we can to be sure that we can anticipate the questions that will be asked, that um, we can understand uh, what we're doing uh, you know, to the same degree. And uh, hopefully uh, when uh, we receive a report sometime after that, the indications will point towards extended accreditation. What do you see for the future at this point, uh, perhaps the next uh, major milestone for the college? Well, I think it's a safe uh, assumption that for several years the institution will be under close watch by both the Higher Education Department and the Higher Learning Commission, but that's a good thing. It's a good thing because what we've been able to do over the last several months is really um, lay the seeds uh, for strong governance leadership uh, and shared governance at Luna Community College. And what we want is to be sure that those seeds are given every opportunity to grow. And sometimes under a climate of close watch like that, um, we're going to be more inclined to follow through with the things that we say we're going to do right this very second. So uh, we expect that in June, the Higher Learning Commission will extend our accreditation, but we'll remain under some sort of close monitoring, either special monitoring, continued show cause, or probation. And that's good because during any kind of transition that might happen between uh, now and, and a year from now, um, that transition will need to support the path that we're going to lay out uh, over the next couple of months, which means that there'll be very little room for variance from what the Higher Learning Commission will see and deem appropriate for this institution. Um, and I think that's good because some of the transitions will include uh, board elections, the hiring of a permanent president, um, uh, to say the least, those things will need to kind of come in and, and, uh, and get on board with what we've been doing over the last several months. Final question. Any message that you want to send out to stakeholders during this process, which includes students, staff, faculty, administrators, and community members? Sure. Well, the first thing I want to do is thank them because over the past several months, what we've seen is, a, is kind of a overwhelming support. In light of the situation, the community has been very supportive of what the staff have been doing here, the work that they've been doing, and, um, uh, and the effort to prepare the report and get ready for the visit. So I want to thank everyone for the work and the support that we've seen thus far. Um, we certainly ask that uh, the administration and the staff be given the opportunity to address any concerns that they have. So we encourage feedback about where we can be stronger, about any gaps that continue to exist at the institution, but the, the fastest, most proper way for us to address those is to hear from them as quickly as possible. So we invite that feedback, again, good, bad, or indifferent, so that we can, uh, we can become aware of the areas in which we need to improve. Um, and if they haven't already done so, um, submit a comment if there's any time for you still to do that by the time you watch this, but uh, please be participatory if asked to do so during the March visit. If, um, if there's a, a call for uh, participation involvement of the general community, take, it, take advantage of that opportunity to come in and meet um, so that uh, the commission can at least understand that there's uh, you know, an interest in what happens to this institution by the communities that we serve. Thank you very much for the time that you took today. Thank you, Jesse.